All right, so welcome back, everybody. So for this video, I'm going to show you guys how to play Century Spice Road. It's uh, by Plan B Games. Now, this is an interesting game. It's actually a very small game. You can play this game easily within a half an hour. So it's not uh, a very large game. But when they made this game, they said they were going to make two more games, which they did because this was made a while, quite a while ago. So this is Century Spice Road, but then there's Eastern Wonders, and then there's also A New World as well. Now, those are basically standalone expansions to Century, and so you can get either or one of, you can either get this one first, or you can get one of the other two first. It doesn't matter, and play them separately. But then you can also combine all three of them if you want, or two of them if you want, into one bigger game. So that's really interesting. So it's like easing you into a game that could be easily complex if you add all three together, possibly. But instead, you're getting used to one at a time, and then you can combine them when you're obviously used to playing all of them. So that's really interesting. So uh, Spice Road has to do with spices. Um, back in the day, the merchants, they would make up elaborate stories of you know, where they found these spices and, um, you know, extraordinary adventures and things like that. And so because of, th because of that and because spices were so, um, uh, such an interesting thing back then and so, you know, obviously good and delicious and useful and varieties of foods and stuff like that, they got rich very fast. And so, um, Anyway, so that's what this game is, is sort of based on. It's based on spices and trading and selling and that kind of thing. So anyways, I'm going to show you guys how to play this game. So uh, first of all, let's talk about the spices. Each of the spices come in these nice little bowls, and they're each identified by a color. So we have four spices in total, and this is the most common, and that is, uh, this is turmeric. Okay, so this is the turmeric. Um, turmeric or uh, spice. Then the next common or the next one up is uh, saffron. So these red cubes identify as saffron. Um, this one I wasn't really aware of. Uh, this particular spice is is uh, cardamom, cardamom or cardamom or cardamom. And apparently that spice is used in like Thai. Uh, like sort of like chai tea and stuff like that. And I think they even use it in cookies and things like that. So that's what this spice is supposed to be. And then the last spice, which pretty much everybody knows about, is cinnamon. Okay, so cinnamon is the last one. Now cinnamon is the hardest one to get. And so um, uh, the, the, the object of the game is to basically trade in spices that you have, and you can have up to 10 spices on a care on your caravan card. Everybody gets a caravan card here, and um, they can have up to 10 spices on it. So they can never have more than that, but if they ever collect more than 10 spices, if they ever collect more, than, more spices than they have room for, they can choose which spices to basically get rid of because they can only have a ten, max of 10. But the point of the game is you're going to be um, trading in the spices that you have, the corresponding spices you have for particular cards here. And so this th this is a card that's going to give you 12 victory points, but you have to trade in, um, obviously, one turmeric, one saffron, one cardamom, and one cinnamon to get this card. And the player, if you're playing a two- or three-player game, the player who obtains six of these cards first will trigger the end of the game. And so in this game, everyone is going to have an equal amount of turns. So if, for instance, you're playing a two-player game and the second player was the one who obtained the sixth card first, the game will end. But if it was the first player who obtained the sixth card, then the second player will get one more turn. And so that's basically what you're trying to get. You're trying to get, you're, you're looking at these cards up here and you're trying to determine which ones you want to go for first. Of course, if you're playing with other players, they're also going to be looking at these and possibly choosing uh, one of these before you possibly get them. And so, you know, if, in a, if you're playing more than two players, it's going to be, these are going to be definitely 
uh, a few possibilities where somebody will get a card before you and then throw off your whole strategy and then be like, well, which one I'm going to go for now, you know? But it takes a while to get the resources, to get the spices you need in order to get a card. So if they do take one before you, chances are they aren't in a position to grab another anytime soon, and you'll be closer to getting something else. So maybe, obviously, you'll be able to get something else. Now, if you ever take a card from here or from here, you'll also get a corresponding coin, and you put in two coins per player. So if you're playing a two-player game, there'll be four coins each, four gold coins and four silver coins. At the end of the game, these gold coins, which are nice, and they're metal, um, at least I think they're metal, um, but these coins, these gold ones, are going to be worth three extra points at the end of the game. And if the silver coins will be worth one extra point at the end of the game. Also, if you have spices on your caravan here, caravan card here, that aren't yellow, so if it's one of those three spices, you're going to get one point for every spice that are one of these three here. That's what you're going to get as well. If you have extra spices you aren't able to use, so you'll get some extra points for them. Of course, you're not going to get points for the turmeric, but that's it about the scoring anyways, because you'll count up all your points, you'll point, you'll, you'll, Count up all the points for these cards and your coins and your spices sitting on your caravan. So, now how do you get spices in this game? Well, let's talk about that next. So, depending on player count will depend on how many uh, of the turmeric you're going to start with. So, if you're the first player in a two-player game, you're going to get three of these turmeric spices. And if you're the second player, then you will get four of these turmeric spices to start off with. So that's the, that sort of kind of mills out to the advantage of going first because this player's got an extra spice than you do. Okay, so there are four actions that you can take on your turn. Um, you can acquire, and the cards that you can acquire are, are from this row here, the purple with the purple, um, uh, this side of the card is purple, so you can acquire uh, any of these in the row um, that you want or you can actually get your hands on. And I'll explain that in a moment. But um, you can go for any of these cards here and that will take an action because you're allowed one action per turn. So if you decided you want to acquire a card for your turn, you could take one of these cards here and take it. Now the first one is always free, but for instance, if you wanted the second card, you would have to put a spice from your caravan here uh, to, to obtain this. Sort of reminds me of Deep Vents. You had to pay um, your own, basically, resources, your own um, uh, extremophiles, your own uh, that kind of stuff. You had to pay your own currency, in, 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 a, in a way, or own resources, in a way, to get something better. But that's basically the same thing. And then, just like in Deep Vents, if a player takes a card that has one of these cubes on it or more, they get to keep the corresponding cubes or spices as well. So, and they get to put them onto their caravan. So that's that's obviously something else that's kind of similar to Deep Vents. But yes, you can acquire these as long as you have the spices to pay for them. That's why you're allowed to start with a few spices, because you may not always want the first card that's here. You might want something like this. And for instance, if I wanted this, I'd have to pay all three of my spices to get that. Now, there's three types of cards you can acquire when you are acquiring a card. Uh, these are basically like trade cards or merchant cards. You will have, for instance, if you have three turmeric, which I would if I was to grab this first one, I could use this as an action. I could play this from my hand after I've, of course, obtained it. On my next turn, I could play this card and pay the three of these to get three saffron. To, so that's pretty nice, right? Three of these for three saffron. So that's pretty nice. 
um, you know, that's pretty good. And so that's one of the actions I can take on my turn is play a card from my hand. Every player will start with two cards that they can play from their hand. This is a spice card, and you might find other spice cards in this row. This is a spice card as well. What it means is, if it's a spice card, you automatically just get the corresponding uh, spices. And so this spice card would give, every time you played it, it would give you two turmeric. If you acquired this one, it's going to give you one cardamom and one turmeric. So that's really nice, right? That's a really good one right there. So that's one of the cards you can play from your hand is spice cards, which just give you basically free spices. Uh, then there's the upgrade cards. These cards will allow you to upgrade your spices basically to the next level or better. So, for instance, uh, this is this is why we have them set up like this because uh, this spice saffron is better than turmeric. Cardamom is better than saffron, and cinnamon is better than cardamom. And so you can upgrade your spices. So. If I, since I have this card here, I could upgrade one spice two times, or I could upgrade two spices one time each with this card. And so, like, for instance, I could exchange both of these for two of the saffron. That is an action. Or, if I didn't want saffron, I could instead basically just trade in one of my yellows for a green, or should I say upgrade one of my yellows into a green, into a cardamom. And so that is basically how the upgrade works. And you might find other upgrade cards in this row. This one will allow you to upgrade three times. So that's also a really good card to go for as well. And so that's the, basically what you're going to do. You're going to play cards from your hand. So acquiring is an action. That's one of the actions in the game. Playing a card from your hand is also an action. And then there are two other types of actions. Now, obviously, one of those actions is acquiring these cards up here, which is called claim. So when you claim a card from up here, that's going to take an action as well. So you can't basically trade in resources, I mean, trade in spices for better spices on the same exact turn that you claim a card that's a victory point card. So that's a separate action. And then, because you are based on what cards you have in your hand, because you are based what you have in your hand, and you might get more as you basically claim, or not claim, but acquire these cards here in this row, which, if you go for the first one, is free, but you might be paying some resources if you want a certain card to help you. Um, you, of course, uh, will eventually have all of your cards in play in front of you, and you'll no longer have any cards in your hand. So when that happens, when you have no longer any cards in your hand, and you don't want to basically acquire another one of these cards, or... Maybe you have a card in your hand, but you don't want to play it yet. Or let's say this is the card you, you have in your hand, but you can't play it because you need to trade in three of these for three of those, but you only have two of those at the moment because you upgraded earlier or something like that. Then obviously I wouldn't be able to play this card, and so obviously I would be out of actions. So when that happens, the fourth action that you can take is called Rest. When you take the action Rest... All of the cards you have in play will then return to your hand, so you'll be able to use them again and again and again. So that's basically how that's going to work, but, but that's all you do when you take the turn rest. That's all you're going to do. You're not going to acquire anything. You're not going to claim anything. You're not going to get spices on that turn. You're just resting. So that's how the, how, that's how the whole game works. And obviously there's some good cards here that you can trade in for better resources. Like for instance, this one over here, you could trade in two red for a cinnamon and two turmeric. So you might be downgrading, if you will, because you're getting the two uh, turmeric, but you're also getting the cinnamon. And that's a really hard one to get because you have to upgrade basically three times you know, which you can't do in a single turn because you can only upgrade two times with this card unless you get this one here, which 
you know, not every player is going to get. So it could take a while for you to obtain the cinnamon spice. So that way, that means this one here is going to be hard to attain because it has cinnamon. That one's going to be hard to attain because it has cinnamon. That one's going to be hard to obtain because it has cinnamon. This one also has cinnamon. And this one also has cinnamon. All of those have cinnamon. Not all of them always have cinnamon, but that means that they're going to be hard to obtain. And so you're going to be doing a lot of, obviously, obtaining spices, upgrading, and then trying to trade in, obviously, trade in um, spices for better spices to get, obviously, some of these cards claimed. But basically, that's basically the whole game. That's how you play. Now, I, I really enjoyed this game. So hopefully one of these days I will try out the other two standalone expansions as well. But I am really satisfied with this game. I wouldn't mind buying this one because it's a good one. After all, this is from the library. So thankfully I got to try this game out without spending a dime. So that's awesome. Um, don't forget to check out your local library to, tr to see if they have any board games that you might be interested in trying. This way, you don't have to worry about, obviously, if you don't like the game, you didn't waste your money, right? That's nice. So the library is a good place to get your games. Try them out. See if you like them. Don't forget to leave a like on this video. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys again next time.